it is true that there are times God can be silent as far as revealing his will over your life and destiny is concerned I was led of the spirit to teach you this because I believe that there are many people who are in the season of the silence of God there is something called the season of the silence of God you pray you fast you do everything and it looks like you are not hearing him let me tell you what that means every time God is silent it means three things number one it means he is working on you that is the first thing every time God is silence and he withholds revealing his will to you it can mean number one that you as the vessel that will be used to do his will there is a work that he's doing in you and revealing his will to you will be a waste in that state and so his silence means that you con you should continue the training of the building until he makes you the vessel that is able to do that will you want him to reveal please listen very carefully god is speaking to someone right now god why have you been silent on me my family my destiny every time god is silent number one discern that his silence is a message that i am making the vessel who i will use to achieve my will look up please god was silent on jesus for 30 years read your bible you don't hear jesus communicating with god as a small child and yet he was god from the time god spoke around his birth you don't hear any discussion again he went to pray he went to learn for 30 years we don't hear the voice of god over jesus's issue again every time god is silent focus on you not him he is doing something in that vessel jesus was in the temple at age 12 because as powerful as jesus is even though he was god incarnate at that state he would not be able to fulfill the will of god he needed to learn he needed to grow luke chapter 2 and verse 52 your bible says in those moments of silence jesus increased in wisdom he increased in stature he increased in favor with god and man don't waste your moments of silence when god is silent rather than lamenting in impatience focus on allowing him build you lord i know that you have not spoken concerning this and that and that it means that there is something the vessel that you want to use for that task has not yet become the version that necessitates the revelation of your will is someone learning tonight L listen what you are learning tonight you are going to use it to help so many people for some of you this message now you will call your loved ones and say hey i came for koinonia i found the key i found the key why you have prayed and submitted your prayer here at miracle service prayer after prayer vigil after vigil most people do not focus on god making them they just focus on god revealing his will every time god reveals his will there is a version that will fulfill that will and if you have not become that version he will withhold his speakings and focus on your training powerful another example i use jesus let me give you one more <laughs> when joseph had a dream that was the end of it there was nothing else he saw or had again he just had a dream of his destiny the sun the moon 11 stars when joseph entered the pit i'm sure he would say god give me explain to me why a righteous man will be inside the pit by my own brothers silence when they were selling him to go to egypt silence but was he ever out of the will of god please talk to me even in your confusion god is still leading you this is a powerful message tonight as confused as you may think you are god is still leading you let me tell you how god leads look at me i want to teach you something powerful if god's desire is for you to go this way and enter a door please watch me if god's desire is for you to go left and enter the door to your destiny 
and in all honesty and sincerity of heart believing him you move right he will remove the door there and bring it here to make sure you do not miss his will that is how determined god is believe this about god most of you don't know how powerful god is have you read the scripture that says all things work together not for everybody to them that love the lord so anytime you don't understand your life just ask do i love the lord if your love is still in place find rest <laughs> trouble only starts when the challenge is told away your love then you are in trouble all things hmm. interpreting the silence of god every time god is silent number one it means he's walking on the vessel joseph look at the tragedies that follow joseph's life from the well joseph would get up they sold him in prison and he started serving he became the head of the prisoners just when he was about to rest potiphar's wife came with her own trouble are we together now and then oh dear look at what happened to joseph that he was in the prison there and he was holding the cloth of potiphar's wife how could you deny he was holding the cloth of potiphar's wife how would he ever explain to them next stage it went to the prison and he was there in the prison do you know he had legitimate grounds to be offended How in the world did I get here? Simply because of the dream, God is 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 that is not worth it. Please carry it and give somebody. That's what somebody wants to do here now. To say, Lord, I am tired of this thing. Beware when God appears to you and say you are highly favored, because sometimes what follows that statement is controversy. Read your Bible. He said you are highly favored you thought that immediately after that you will see people who will come together with gifts and say mary you mean god appeared to you the favor of god can be very controversial and he calls it favor how do you explain that you are pregnant and yet you claim you are a virgin and instead of god to now speak and defend you he now keeps quiet learn how to live in the silence of god my dear people joseph went to the prison and he stayed there even in his confusion and pain he was in the will of god and one day watch this he saw two people and he interpreted their dreams and he said please when you go to pharaoh he didn't say tell him to make me king uh -uh. he said all i want is to get out of this place please tell pharaoh i'm innocent and the man got there guess what happened he forgot him two years if you are joseph and you come out and become prime minister who is the first person you are going to deal with you will first deal with the wine presser followed by potiphar's wife when he became king it was unnecessary when when the will of god is manifest in your life there are battles that become unnecessary you have won Are you learning this now so after two years in patience the voice of God was about to come let me tell you even when you enter the season of his voice you will not know you are that close it will be one morning and then the king sent for fair for Joseph just like somebody came for koinonia here tonight you don't know that the the, the voice of his majesty after 10 years after 15 years after 20 years after five years after two months finally his majesty is about to speak sit down let me tell you how god speaks when god is speaking to end your seasons he does not come as a still small voice read your bible Mm -mm. when it has to do with bringing your season to an end he comes in majesty he will do things that will let them it will be impossible to doubt that he's the one that came hallelujah and on that morning 
Joseph got up in the morning. How are you, dear prisoners? How are you, Joseph? God bless you. Ah, it's been a long time. Two years plus. We don't know how long he stayed in the prison. We know that the two years was from the time the one presser left. So X number of years plus two years. He didn't know that that morning he'll be prime minister. The, gate, the jailer did not know he was going to open the gate for his boss. Hear me? While you are praying and trusting God, Lord, if you will only give me a job of 200,000, I will be grateful. The day the voice of God comes to honor you for being patient through the season of silence, somebody will call you and say, I'm leaving Nigeria. I've been looking for someone to head my company. Can you come and do it for me? And you will think it's a lie that when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Please sit down. The king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. I'm sure his heart was beating when he came to stand because they didn't tell him why they asked him to come out. If a king should send for you from prison, you are either going to go back or you, they will execute you. And I can imagine him shaking and standing before the king. Your majesty. And the king said, well, I slept and I had a dream. And they say you can interpret dreams. He said, well, it is not within my power. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. This is what you saw, Pharaoh. This is what you saw. So what is the solution? Gather 20% of all of this and save for seven years. And when he finished, Pharaoh said, since God revealed it to you, who else in Egypt is able to do this? I am Pharaoh. And it is only in the throne that you will be second to me. You become the administrator right away. Look up. There are many things he would have done when he was in prison. When he was in prison, he probably would have been gathering some money to build his own house and make meaning of his life. Everything he would have done if he were not in the prison came to him in one day. Read your Bible. A wife came in. He didn't need to look for a wife. Potiphera, the wife of the priest, the priest of On, his daughter, they gave him free. They changed his name. They put royal robe everything in one day can i tell you while you are waiting don't be regretting what you would have been doing it is already in the plan the compensation is in the plan believe me when i tell you this the compensation has already been built hear me i know oh hannah that you've been waiting a long time for a child but be patient the child that is coming is not a normal child he is the one who will anoint all the kings of israel so be patient hear me do you know why patience is powerful patience is powerful because it can help you to be able to gather together the kind of compassion you need through your pain so that you will sustain certain results when they come when certain destiny things come too easy there is no memory bank of pain you will be careless over many great things but when you you think joseph had the time to be careless after spending x plus two years in the prison the memory of his pain in the prison will not make him take his job lightly that's why some of us press into this thing of god because we know where he brought us from sit down let's wrap up when god is silent number one it means he's working on you the vessel number two when god is silent what does that mean it means he is working on other factors needed to help you do his will look up please the will of god does not only depend on your obedience the will of god depends on the synergy of many other people and many other factors and sometimes when god leaves you in his silence is because he's at the other end of your destiny rearranging the people and the conditions that must make you to walk in purpose let me show you one scripture very quickly luke chapter 1 from verse 39 is god helping someone tonight 
Luke chapter 1 from verse 39. This is the story of Mary and Elizabeth. If Elizabeth had a child before that time, there would be no occasion that would bring two of them together. And Mary arose in those days. The moment, watch this now. The moment Mary finished her interaction with the angels, she found out that her stomach started protruding. She was afraid because no one else could relate with her situation. But she remembered there was Elizabeth, a woman who has also gone through that season. And so as soon as she went to meet her, do you know that one of the major reasons why Elizabeth was delayed was so that the timing of Jesus and John the Baptist, imagine if she gave birth and John did everything, roam around and died. Do you know how frustrating John would have, it would have been for John to be in the wilderness? All the while Jesus was growing, John was also in the wilderness. It was the moment he started his ministry. That was when Jesus was also ready to be baptized. If John were born earlier than that time, John would not be able to have the patience to wait until Jesus grows. Imagine John as an adult and then Jesus will start growing. How old will he be when Jesus will be 30? So for that sake, Elizabeth had to wait. There are times that the silence of God means he's putting other things in place that will need to the bone that will be joined to bone to make sense of your destiny and purpose hallelujah are you hearing what i'm saying now yes let's finish up 39 uh-huh 40 now and entered into the house of zecharias and saluted elizabeth verse 41 and it came to pass that when elizabeth heard the salutation of mary the babe leaped in her womb and elizabeth was filled with the holy ghost i thought god was silent so the holy ghost could still speak through elizabeth why didn't he speak for that long i thought elizabeth had backslidden that she would not hear the voice of god again and the moment she met with mary the holy ghost came again and she began to speak thou art blessed among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb uh-huh next verse and whence is this to me that the mother of my lord should come to me are you seeing prophecy who told elizabeth that this young lady was carrying his lord her lord 44 and lo as soon as the voice of my salutation sounded in my ears the babe leaped in womb for joy destiny had connected can i tell you this for some of you the reason why god is delaying you like this is because the person in the blueprint of your destiny to connect you the person just got born again and that's why god is anointing people like us to hurry up with the training of that person so that the person will rise to a position where that destiny connection can happen are you getting what i'm saying now imagine boas roaming around and asking i am a responsible man will i not get a good wife to marry whereas something was happening at the back end ruth and naomi god was preparing the great grandmother of jesus and unknown to the man he would be a great grandfather of jesus can I tell you this? Every time you don't understand God, give thanks and know that He's doing something, preparing a table, fixing things that you will never, never need to have any trouble about again in your life. For many years in Zaria again, we're looking for land for ministry. No ministry will stay that long without at least having a property to start building and all of that. And we looked around for land. We looked around for land. I prayed and prayed and fasted. I said, Lord, there has to be land in Zaria here for us. Every time you call people, you anoint them. There has to be. I mean, there should be something. I prayed and prayed. And, but then when I learned this, I knew that something was happening. And I kept quiet. One day, one thing led to the other. And then I got, I, I slept and I had a dream. And I saw directly opposite the teaching hospital 
in Zaria. I saw myself standing there and there was an empty land there. And the Lord told me, this is true, that one day this will be the place that you will buy. They had done an excavation there to fix the road. And so because he was depressed, I'm not sure most people could afford buying it and all of that. And that was where God kept that land. To get that much, that size of a land in Zaria is, is, is quite a big, 36 plots. And right there, God kept it. I'm sure the cult that was tied will be wondering, what am I doing here? My colleagues are moving around. Why am I being tied here like this? Not knowing that it was being tied there. Even the owner did not have, he said the cold that no man had ridden on. That means when the owner bought it, he just felt something was leading him to tie it. I'm sure the cold to say, who did I offend? I've been here for a long time. Not knowing that you have the privilege to be the one to write Jesus. The triumphant entry. But when the time came, Jesus himself said, now that I have come, all things are ready go and lose that cold and if any man asks you why are you now losing what you tied before tell them the master for some of you God tied you because of something great he stopped you when other people were going forward he kept you and now he's about to reveal you like a trophy because all things are ready is someone learning number three when God is silent, what does that mean? The third thing that happens when God is silent is that it is possible that he is fighting unseen battles and averting certain dangers that may befall you on your way to executing his will. He is fighting unseen battles and averting certain dangers that the devil is already programming ahead of you while you are up and doing as far as his will is concerned this is very powerful the third reason why god can be silent as far as revealing his will is concerned is that he can be at the other side fighting battles unseen battles look up please when satan tries to stop your destiny and he cannot stop it when he knows that it is sure you are moving the path of destiny the next thing he does is to begin to program all kinds of woes on your path to actualizing destiny god seeing that can suspend that which is his will for your life and then deal with the obstacles you will be waiting for in future and then the moment that is done he will release you to go one scripture matthew chapter 2 and verse 20 the bible says when jesus was born herod was angry the spirit of the antichrist was moving through herod to make sure that they would kill all the children and the angel told um joseph and mary he said run with this child and go and hide him now do you know they hid jesus there and there was no manifestation of angel again or the voice of the spirit silence they just went remember where they ran to was a temporary place when do we return back to live our normal lives silence verse 20 says the angel now appeared and said arise and now take the young child and his mother and go back into the land of israel why for they are dead which sought the young child's life now you can go back it is over all those who would have attacked him and frustrated the ministry all the curses and the yokes that would have been waiting for you while god is suspending the revelation of his will he's making sure that all those things are dealt with when the road is clear he says now you can go the path is clear before you most believers are not matured enough i hope that what you have learned tonight has helped you so that you can give god praise even when it does not make sense and with this understanding you can comfort many others the silence of God is an advantage. Arise. Take your business now. Arise. Take your family now. Arise. Take your child. We're about to pray, but let me share a true life story that happened to someone. I pray for a lot of people and a couple came and met me one time. True story. And the man was, 
really lamenting and he said he was not able to have a child listen carefully and um, there was a health problem between him and the wife and all of that and I, I comforted him I said we'll pray I know it's not easy I was even going to refer him maybe you'll see I'll recommend a doctor for you to see and all of that and then true story I held their hands to pray for them and suddenly my eyes opened this is a true story if I'm joking I'll tell you I'm joking as I held their hands the Lord opened my eyes and I saw a strange vision that would teach me a lesson about what I just taught you in that vision I just saw the man enter a room with the wife and I saw children three children they were running around and then in the scene changed and all of them entered a car and they were driving and going somewhere and then a truck or something like that I can't really remember came and just smashed everything and all the children died that was what I saw in my vision I mean it I stand by God to tell you this all the children died and I saw them wailing and wailing and I came back to myself and I said you say you don't have children or you lost children they said no we've never had children I said give thanks you don't know what God was stopping are you are you getting what I'm saying now it see when you walk with God ba when God says give thanks just give thanks you don't know the battles some of you here respectfully speaking not to get you emotional some of you have you have prayed for God to open some doors and the moment the door opened the trouble that came with that door it was almost not worth it again and God is saying I don't want that to happen to you again allow me deal with the battles that the devil has programmed then it will be a triumphant entry for you is someone understanding what I'm teaching now this is very very powerful very powerful if you do not understand this side of God you will never be able to give thanks even when you don't understand him if God did not train Moses for the extra 30 years and simply because of the pressure to make sure prophecy comes to pass and he pushed Moses prematurely like that he may have brought them out of Egypt but they would all die even with all the training it was only Joshua and Caleb in that generation that entered the promised land so you would wonder what was the hurry now for did you read the story of the Shunam of the, um, of the that was a Shunammite woman right the one who had a child who later died remember there was a time that the prophet would be passing and she would see him and say please let me honor you I discern you a man of God one time he said okay because every time you honor a grace you provoke something from that grace to bless you he said what do I do for you I have influence should I speak in the gov uh, to the government he said no I live among my own people do you have a child no according to the time of life you will have a child I remember the day or I can imagine the day they were dancing with the child wondering join us sing hallelujah not knowing that a few moments after that the child was going to die and the child died they brought Gehazi his spirit didn't allow the anointing work he came with the rod and nothing happened because it's not just in the rod it, your heart is the battery that powers that rod if your heart condition is corrupt you can hold a real rod and it will not wake anybody and the prophet had to come himself he was teaching us a lesson there that when God gives you breakthrough he takes responsibility for maintaining it can I tell you this look up now I want to tell you this as we wrap up every time through ignorance you indict the integrity of God he will let you have your way but you will be ready for the consequences of going out of his program let me repeat every time you insist and you put pressure on God and you say Lord I don't understand this your thing I have a will you gave me a will I choose to do things my way God will honor you the same way a sinner can stand and say I don't care carry your Calvary there and go I didn't ask you to die for me God will honor them to live their lives but at the end of it when they die for sure they are going to hell it is dangerous to wrestle with God it is possible to wrestle with God and you will be the winner 
I hope you know that. It is possible to wrestle with God and you will be the one who wins. But let me tell you this. Every time your will defeats the will of God, start being afraid for yourself. It will take mercy to redeem you. Tonight's teaching is very serious. It will take mercy to redeem you when you get out of the will of God. There are stories upon stories I can tell you of people who stubbornly push through. God, I don't care. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger. We're going to pray. There was a time I was given an invitation to go to a particular nation. I would not mention the name. And my people already know. The moment my spirit begins to fight something they just leave me alone quietly because once my spirit starts fighting something I know that there is something that is wrong I may not fully understand we started planning for that meeting and the people were very happy I was excited to go to that land it will be my first time there and I perceived the people to be very serious but we started the planning to go and stamp my visa. My visa was in another embassy. There was a delay. Very silly things were causing. It was many things were affecting the preparation. At a point I told them, stop. Something is wrong. I know my work with God. Something is wrong. Eventually, I asked them to tell the people that I'm sorry I may not be able to make it. True story. They were very sad now i love them even today perhaps they are following but i said i may not i'm not going to be able to honor the meeting i'm sorry but they got really sad they got sad and i said what is wrong if you've spent some money maybe bookings don't worry let me just have your bills i will refund you in full later on i would discover that when it was announced that i was coming to that nation true story people from neighboring nations started saying we're coming to and when they saw the volume of people and the kinds of people they sat together and said look we're not going to waste this opportunity they now came up with a program where people will pay a particular amount and then they will have a private session with me they gave them an assurance that if they pay that money they will give them and the people said if it's a puzzle, no problem how much is it some people were going to pay for themselves and their whole families and while i was here my spirit i'm teaching you how to walk in the will of god if your prayer life is dead you will fall into many traps cheaply not every open door is god's door or not every open door is a door you should enter at that time sometimes it may be the door you will eventually enter It was a difficult thing later on in anger they did not tell the people i was not coming again because they didn't want to be disappointed and so the meeting would start crowds of people came and they brought somebody with all due respect to the body of christ they carried one prophet from a nation and took somewhere and one young boy that boy made a caricature of the gospel he did so many and it was a land that is very conservative that young boy did a lot of nonsense things was trying to it turn i think i was hearing he was turning water you know i'm, I'm not i don't speak against I, I, be, I, I believe in miracles but i know what is not a miracle hallelujah a lot of nonsense and do you imagine respectable people who flew in you can imagine a man of status with his children who flew in people were fasting and praying to encounter god here comes a young boy ill prepared for ministry who just came and wasted their time people were just kissing and they got up and walked away they said no wonder apostle did not come and i said lord you see how you protect us and sometimes we don't know that it is your love 
many restraints is the love and the mercy of God so that certain battles will be fought are we together when koinonia started after about two three years or thereabout i started having an inspiration should i come to abuja to come and set up koinonia i was in this same city having a retreat and i saw a plane the plane was written eni the plane left zaria and it was coming to abuja the moment it was about to land abuja it crashed and everybody within the plane died i knew what god was saying that don't you dare do anything that is outside of my timing it was still in his plan that we'll be here but timing is as important as the word the word go and the word go now are not the same the word go and the word go later are not the same so just because god tells you you are going to go left you need to ask him now that i know where i'm going when am i going when am i going because if you miss one day or if you exceed with one day it can corrupt the entire process of the journey has god spoken to someone tonight there are only two prayer points we are going to pray tonight within the time that we have the prayer first prayer is oh god where i am already at the edge of making a fatal disaster over my life i obtain grace for a u-turn this night open your mouth and begin to pray please pray from the depth of your heart someone is praying talk to the lord Lord, where I have missed out on your will for my life, I obtain grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone is praying where I have feared of sincerely. I thought you were the one telling me to do the business i thought you told me to start ministry now i realize you are not the one i'm not ashamed to cry show me mercy because he said his yoke is easy and his burden is light when you are carrying what is killing you vet and be sure that it is god's burden you are carrying don't be tired please pray this is about your destiny hallelujah prayer point number two lord grant me the grace and the staying power that all the days of my appointed time i will wait until your voice comes to lead me destroy the spirit of impatience listen especially this our generation there is pressure to prove a point i am now a millionaire ministry is now working i now have thirty thousand members be careful for 10 years you may be pastoring 10 people those 10 people are not yet your members they are the leaders you are raising afterwards god will now bring members and you will find out that you are leading a global ministry it is this lack of understanding the will of God and the timing of God that has brought many people to rub their hands in all kinds of satanic things. You are going to pray, Lord, the grace to stay. The grace to stay in the area and the place of your will. No matter the sun, no matter the rain, the stamina to insist to see that your will comes to pass in my life. Someone pray, lift your voice and pray. Somebody pray, somebody pray from the depth of your heart.
Shale brekete basha la branda gada baratos kodia. Hallelujah. First John five fourteen and fifteen. First John five fourteen and fifteen, please. Media help us. First John five fourteen and six. This will be our memory verse for tonight. Use it to pray throughout this week. Let's read it together. And this is the confidence we have in Him that if we ask anything according to his will he heareth us 15 and if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask we know that we have our petitions that we desired of him your confidence is that once you are in the will of god find rest once you are in the will of god find rest for some of you you are about to quit your job right now and god is saying that job if you are can be patient three more months just when your promotion is on its way coming don't let the devil cheat you because the salary is not a reflection don't make the mistake of hagar when they banished hagar hagar went away in anger when god met her he said return back to your mistress your mistress listen please use this week to pray pray in the spirit write the various aspects of your life out and say father with clarity reveal your will don't mind people who say it doesn't matter you have a brain be careful brain has landed many people in trouble it is better to be foolish and to wait when his word comes influence comes grace comes the man you are seeing today standing before you that by the privilege of God's grace you celebrate is a product of the honor that comes in standing with the will of God I pray for you in the name of Jesus the son of the living God for all of you who are asking Lord direct me let me know your counsel for the next chapter of my life receive precision of understanding of his will in Jesus name Some of you, he will come to you in dreams this night. Some in visions this night. Some he will give you a scripture this night. Some he will reveal to your spirit this night. But by all means, may my God reveal to you. By all means, may my God reveal to you. Number two, I want to pray specially for all those who have been in the waiting room of destiny waiting on the word of the lord i want to pray for you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you Everything that was stolen shall be to you. Can I tell you this? Hear me. It does not take God anything to compress the blessings of your 20 years, of your 10 years, of your 5 years and bring it in a moment. Therefore I prophesy to you, especially for those who have been waiting on the word of the Lord, in the name of Jesus, with his word, let there be restoration. With his word, let there be multiplication. With his word, let there be increase. In the name of Jesus. Hear me. For some of you, as the word of God is coming in this season, it will come with a grace to pursue. It will come with a grace to overtake and by all means to recover all. I say it again. It will come with a grace to pursue. It will come with a grace to overtake. Hear me. Some of you may have been burying 5, 10, 15 years. It's not one child that will come. Four children at once will come to compensate for the time of waiting. In the name of Jesus Christ. Joseph, do not fear. 
your compensation is already in the palace joseph do not see your season of the prison as a waste your compensation if you insist to come out of the prison god will open the door but you will return back to potiphar's house but if you wait for his timing you will never need to go to potiphar's house again from the prison you are going to the throne may the grace that enthrones let that grace rest upon you may the grace that lifts let that grace rest upon you in the name of jesus christ please let me encourage you please i plead with every one of you watching and listening in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god listen to this message again please if you love jesus and you honor me as your man of god go and listen to this go to koinonia global some of you this night go and settle down again believe me when i tell you many of you did not hear what i said go back and listen with your heart open and you will truly hear what the lord told you through this message are we together everybody go and settle down and listen you will hear a word for your business you will hear a word for your health for every aspect of your life jesus is coming back soon i repeat it jesus is coming back soon please listen to me a day will come you will wake up in the morning and find out there is no coin on here again there is no election again nigeria a day will come you will get up in the morning and you'll find out dear civil servant there is no going for work again a day will come you will get up in the morning and find out the enemy you seek to die both you and him the scene has changed a day will come you will get up and you will find out the people who massage your ego and lie to you they are no longer there and i saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away is that in your bible and there was found no place for them verse 12 we're reading to 15 and i saw the dead small and great this is the thing about death that is scary small and great that means the concept of small and great is a relative statement only within the confines of earth with respect to death does not know small does not know great stand before god notice the name of any there's no preacher's name mentioned there there's no businessman's name mentioned there there's no title and politician apostle professor excellency no small and great you are one of the two stand before god and the bible says the books were opened and another book was opened which was the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works this is the bible the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the death which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works 14 and death and hell itself were cast into the lake of fire he said this is the second death the last verse and whosoever apostle prophet businessman giant in ministry small man whoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire full stop can i tell you all of the wars we have in our world today right now we're in a time of politics and it's good to you know all kinds of people fighting president chairman national assembly thank god for that students hoping that strike will resume so that they will go to school preachers hoping that more members will come everybody hoping one day when the real referee the referee is not social media uh -uh. the referee is not the preacher when the real referee rings that bell whether you are prepared or not the match must stop and he will gather all of us and we will stand that day will be a day of pleasant surprises please hear me 
you must live with eternity in view no matter how long you live the highest i've seen in my life is about 136 but no matter how long you live either he will come to meet you or you will go to meet him but you must depart this realm yes we are returning back to earth but not this version of earth this will be folded like a curtain when i stand before god he's not going to say apostle how are you no <laughs> no when you stand before him you will not say koinonia member how are you small and great all our titles will mean nothing that is the day we will know that he is king of kings and lord of lords please let me remind us i'm both old and new school permit me to be old school now jesus is coming back soon i repeat it jesus is coming back soon koinonia global body of christ planet earth the lord jesus the monarch of the universe is returning he will return i assure you is one of the seven pillars of the christian faith he's returning and this life will be rolled and folded like a curtain what does that mean if all your relevance and everything that you have is just connected to money and titles and anointing and ministry and politics and any other thing you may be disappointed when he comes can I tell you the truth I made up my mind that nothing around me and nothing outside me is what my attachment to Thank God for money, but it will come and go away. Thank God for titles, they will come and go away. We're wrapping up. Listen very carefully. This birthday broadcast, hear me, Koinonia Global and creation and all who are listening. It is not the celebration of a celebrity. It is not a celebration of some great man. Without Christ, without Jesus, this man you see, there is very little to me as a person i will tell you this if there is anything in my life today that is worth celebrating including the gift of time that was given to me it is because he's alive and it's because he has shown mercy thank god for the cakes you have made thank god for the gifts thank god for the wonderful things and i truly i don't downplay it humbled i don't know how many times tears rolled out of my eyes as i rolled on the floor before the lord thanking him for the gift of life but i am reminding you again bad days is not the celebration that you were born it's the celebration of what you are doing with the life that you have been given you only truly qualify to celebrate your birthday if you are living it for jesus and living it for purpose not if you are living <laughs>